Hi, I'm Billy Maddox and I'm gonna mess this up so that you don't have to. Hi and welcome back to another Bookbinding Basics. I think it's about time we start to dip our toe into the ocean that is hardcover books. I, I don't really know how that metaphor works. The ocean and the toe with the dipping of the, your foot is wet, get your foot wet. This is to get your foot wet. <laughs> um, I think it's about time we start to get into uh, hardcover books and case binding and I will teach you how to do that. But before I throw you into the deep end, there's the water metaphor again. Before I throw you into the deep end, I think it might be a good idea to just take, to take a look at book binding board and some of its properties and some very cool things that you can do to a hardcover. And you don't necessarily need to know how to do a case bound hardcover book in order to use this in some sort of capacity. Anyway, book binding board. This is book binding board, right? Now take a look here at what you're looking at. This comes in like giant sheets, right? I've got a big giant one here. And if you look at it carefully, let's just take one. I like bending it like this so that you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. So you see this board, it's super dense, it's super strong, right? But when you take a look at what it's actually made of, you can start to get an idea of what we're gonna do today. So this is multiple layers, there you can see it. Multiple individual layers of pressed paper to create this like insanely strong board, right? Now, since we have these layers and you see how, the, how they can kind of separate from one another, what you can do is inlay something into a book cover or cut a complete window, but knowing that you have all these layers of individual sheets of paper that separate, this allows you to do something like this, an inlay in a hardcover. And you do that by doing light score cuts, very, very light score cuts, as you see right here. This is probably really dangerous the way I'm cutting, so I'm really sorry for anyone who's uh, watching. This is not very <laughs> good. So you do light score cuts. You can go way, way deeper, but just to give you an example, you see how this starts to pull up already? And I can grab a hold of this and start to just make myself a little area here. You see? I can go way further down and do a deeper score cut here. Let's just do a deeper score cut here. And you see that these layers separate quite easily. And you can start to create a little area here for yourself to put something in. You see that? Start to create a little area. I'm doing it kind of messy because I'm doing it quick, but you can see, you know, you get the idea. So why don't we start off by doing a simple shape? I don't know, let's do like a triangle, okay? Just so that you can see how like corners work. I, I feel like you can get an idea of how like right angle corners would work from that little example. It's rel relatively simple to do that. I've never done rounded shapes, although I don't see why it would be any different. Just light score cuts and go slow, always go slow. So why don't we start off by doing a simple shape. Let's do a triangle, just so that you can see how it affects in a tighter corner than a right angle corner. You know, I feel like if you see a triangle, you can get an idea for both uh, something rounded and something square for some reason. That's my logic and I'm sticking to it.
So I'm doing light, really, really light score cuts around this uh, triangle. And I know I'm gonna go about halfway deep, but I don't want to press down on the cut too, too hard uh, because you, you run the risk of puncturing all the way through. So you do wanna go slow, slow, slow. Well, I try to gauge by, by using the tip of my knife, you know? I sort of measure it up against the, uh, the board itself and I know that if my tip is going in a certain, uh, you know, that's how you can kind of gauge where you are in your scoring. Um, and then start to sort of, just with the tip of the knife, get underneath that cut and start to lift up those layers of paper. As you saw, all it is is layers of paper. So it can be separated. Um, it can be split completely down the middle. So that's the way you build that up. Now I'm gonna take, I have some random, um, just so you can see how what, what it looks like. I just have, have some random book binding cloth and I think I'm gonna use this to cover that bit, you know, to cover that um, cut that we just did and inlay this in there and see what it looks like. Let's just see what it looks like. Um, it'll be a small piece anyway, so. Um, just so that you could see what that looks like and um, then after that we'll, you, you know you'll be able to see um, how to sort of cover something and round it off so we're gonna add some glue onto this board and some a little bit of glue onto the backing of the paper and we're gonna start to sort of work that in to I always start sort of from the center and get that kind of glued in and then work my way out towards like the corners. I'm using my bone folder to kind of get really in there and make sure um, I get it in the in those sort of corner crevices and make sure it's all like nice and, and flat. And then uh, once I have that, I kind of work my way outwards uh, to the edges. Now that we have this all covered, well, I, I, I seem to have cut rounded corners to this because we talked about rounded shapes before. So I was like, well, why don't I do rounded corners? So while we're here, why don't I show you how to finish off a rounded corner with a uh, book binding cloth. You're gonna do a series of little cuts. You don't wanna cut all the way to the board because you need some of that material to sort of wrap around that corner. Well, it's not a corner anymore, but you're gonna need it to wrap around that edge.
and then those flaps will be able to sort of lay down on top of each other and you'll get a nice little rounded edge on that, uh, you know, on the thing. <laughs> So I guess you can kind of see what I was making all along. But the material covered and the knowledge and the and the uh, information in the video shouldn't be discounted because all of it is for real. But yes, I made myself a play button in the only way that I knew how, which is through a through the way of bookbinding. So that's my thousand subscriber play button. Thanks so much for watching. Roll the thing!